uh, alleged homosexuality in the Bronx with Ben Bada. Uh You got Queens allegedly with Russell. You got Uptown allegedly with Andre, right? So now when you go over to Brooklyn to Cold Chillin', you got Fly Ty. But you never, I've never heard any rumors about Fly Ty and Cold Chillin', right? And ironically, everybody else blew up except for Fly Ty. He had a run with Cold Chillin', but it never became Uptown MCA, like with the Jodeci, the Mary J. Blodges, you know what I'm saying? He had uh, like the Drew School early, but eventually those guys went on to get on, on, on the majors, right? And like I said, he didn't, he didn't have to run Andre Harrell did. He didn't be he didn't become uh as big as Africa Bambada did in the movement of the Zulu Nation, right? Because like I said, damn near every artist in New York was under Zulu, right? Then Russell, he uh Cold Chilling did not could not compete with Def Jam. Def Jam still in business today, right? So there was a time when Andre, after Russell and Rick Rubin stopped doing business or broke up allegedly, Russell, Andre Harrell, and Fly Ty all lived in an apartment in, in Left Rack, Queens. That's where, um, Nori's from, Kia Baby Doll, Jeffries is from Left Rack uh, Apartments. They, them three had an apartment together. Now, Fly Ty came home one day and he said he caught Andre and Russell in there doing something, allegedly. And he never said what they was doing, but what he said was he went, he never went back to the apartment no more. Whatever he walked in on, he didn't he didn't agree with it, and he never lived with them no more after that. Now you can we can all assume whatever that was, right? But for me, seeing where Fly Ty career went and where Andre went and where uh Russell went and Ben Bada went. It is strange. Even where look at Rick Rubin is as big as he became. But it's strange that Cool Herc and Fly Ty never had no rumors of homosexuality around them and they did not grow the way they did. Now, that could be a reach, right? That could be a reach, but let's now move to these other guys are the gatekeepers. These are the heads of hip hop at that time. You got Russell, Andre, Bambada, right? That's that's uptown in Queens, right? If you look at the movie Crush Groove, the Roxy was the spot. Everybody is going to the Roxy to congregate and get together, this, that, and the other, right? And then you got the village area downtown where they hanging out at, where 
or the I'm gonna be nice and say the alternate lifestyle is going on, right? Now you fast forward a little bit. Uptown Records become successful. Albie Shaw blows up. Mary J. Blige blows up. Father MC blows up. Uh, they have a compilation. Uptown is kicking it with Groovy Chill and, and Finesse and Sequence and all this stuff. The label blows up and to the point where uh, Albie Shaw, Joe C and Mary J. Blige of uh, multi-million dollar stars, right? So now you got a young Puff working for Andre. Now Andre is already allegedly experienced in this world with Russell and Bambada and, um, and we are just niggas still in the ghetto. We are not familiar with this lifestyle because that lifestyle is not a part of our ghettos. Do we got gay people in our, in the projects in the neighborhoods? Yes. Is niggas walking around dressed up in drag? No. Is niggas in the in the projects even thinking about same sex? No. In school or it is 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 at that age when we younger, are we even talking about same sex or transgenders and any of these things? No, right? But this is the, going into the late 80s, right? The mid 80s to late 80s of hip hop, right? Tyra, good looking, love, appreciate it. Right, so, Cover boy for people thought choke was lying. Yeah, I know they thought I was lying, but I don't I don't care if what people think. That's why, you know, look look how it's coming out. Right. So um over like I said, Andre's blowing up, right? And he got puff now. Now for whatever reason, I'm sure when Puff went over there, uh, I'm not going to say he wasn't already indulged in that lifestyle because he could allegedly Puff and Kurt Burroughs were lovers in college. So when Puff going over to Uptown, he can, he may have already allegedly been an indulgent in that lifestyle. But however, it is alleged that him and, and, and uh, Andre was supposed to be indulgent in, in that type of play, even though you got Misa, who was dating Puff at that time, who uh, allegedly has dated women, right? Um, then he had him go behind uh, I'll be sure back who was married to Kim Porter and take Kim Porter and take uh, his son and run off with them or whatever, right? But eventually when Puff leaves Andre, he goes to Clyde Davis. And then there's the alleged relationship between Puff 
and Clive Davis, right? Which that relationship gave him, got him what, 40 million, I think, for Big and Craig Mack. And then there's the 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 rumors of the relationship between him and Clive over the years. And then eventually Clive Davis comes out after maybe 20 years in his book and say that he he's been gay or bisexual over the years and that he liked young black men. Who is the young black man he was talking about? That nigga's 90 right now. Puff is fucking 50. So 